Welcome back to the Weekly News Roundup and the Linux edition. All of the latest Linux news that we found fascinating enough to chat about. There's a bunch of other things I have in my uh, to do a longer video on. That list is getting super long, so I got to get through it pretty soon. But anyway, we're going to go ahead and dive on in. These are the stories I tend to include here are the ones that aren't massive enough for a whole video, but still interesting enough for the Linux world. The first is the next version, the next LTS of Ubuntu 2404 is going to drop the GNOME games. So on the full install of Ubuntu, you used to have a few games installed, the Solitaire, Mahjong, Mines, and Sudoku. Um, those will no longer be installed if you select the, um, the full. So uh, obviously, if you're doing the minimal install, you didn't get them but if you got the full install, you'd get some extra software, including these four games. They're going to take those out. Now, to be clear, they are not being removed from the repository. If you're like, I got to have my solitaire, it is still there. No changes to it. They're just like, you know, and I really think this is Ubuntu moving into a more professional direction. Why in the world Windows was pushing Candy Crush on everybody and has the uninstallable Xbox games crap involved uh, for a business uh, focus system is totally beyond me as well. And I know there's other applications beyond Xbox, but, you know, it's like, here's my full professional computer that Candy Crush keeps coming back from the grave. Is that still a problem on Windows? I don't know. Let me know in the comments. I've not used Windows in a long time. So let me know if Candy Crush is still uh, uh, zombily returning <laughs> <laughs> incessantly to Windows 10. Um, but they're just saying that this is going to take out a little bit of space from it. Not, you know, not a ton of space, 65 megabytes to their now bloated four gigabyte download. Lord help us. Uh, why in the world? That's getting, oh, snaps. That's why. Uh, but if you are uh, looking for those games, you can still install them, but they're not going to be there by default anymore. All right, so next up is a AirPod battery monitor. This is if you're using GNOME or um, you know, obviously Budgie, it might work with. Um, I'm not sure how well that would work. It's, it is a GNOME extension specifically, so you'd have to fight with it on that one. <laughs> but uh, just saying that because uh, at least for right now, GNOME is still a uh, requirement for Budgie. But if you are running GNOME and you are using AirPods, and uh, it's not just AirPods, it's also the... Um, um, uh, Beats, AirPods and Beats headphones. Uh, this new monitor will allow you to get more data and information. You can see how the battery is, and then you can see what the uh, charge indicators are up in the uh, up in the uh, status bar of GNOME. So if you are using GNOME and you are using Beats or AirPods, you now have an extension to check your battery monitor and other status of those particular devices. So this is a really cool thing. I, I like this. It's kind of nice. And I do like that it is an extension because, you know, I'm not going to buy AirPods or Beats. Uh, so it's nothing I would ever want. But for someone that does want that to have the extension to install in, that's really cool. So... Let me know if that is interesting to you. We did, of course, get the official release of Tails 6.0. You can go back and have a look at my detailed look at Tails 6.0 and how you can upgrade from a 5X to the 6.0 with maintaining your existing persistent drive. I talk about that and a few of the small bugs that I encountered on that. But the new version is out with Debian 12 Bookworm and GNOME 43, coming with a variety of different features that GNOME 43 gives us, uh, enhancing dark mode and things like that. Uh, I'm not as a uh, huge fan on the the new look and style of GNOME, but it's not horrible out of uh, out of the way. Um, why am I not getting more information? Okay, um, the one take home I do want to mention, there was the one thing that we weren't sure about is the Onion Share application. 2.6 is out, and they were trying to get 2.6 in there, but that is one of the things that uh, that did end up retaining the 2.2 version in this because there were some security implications specifically two CVEs with 
the tor share on gnome 43 that were causing some issues so your onion share does still have the 2.2 version instead of 2.6 hopefully they will get that resolved in the uh, next release of tails but they weren't going to hold back tails 6 over that other things i had mentioned inside of that other video are up to date and you can now get this guy and get it installed onto your system and Plasma 6 is out. I'm going to attempt to get uh, get this downloaded and play around with it. Uh, I do want to have a look. So they're giving us a, a lot more, um, almost in in some of these views, a little bit more gnome type type look to it. It's like, why? <laughs> but Plasma is nice. Uh, I do like it. Uh, although it is starting to wear thin on my Raspberry Pi, there, some of the latest updates have caused a few issues that I've been having. Um, now, some of the, the major change here is um, the upgrade to the QT6 framework, and they are doing Wayland first. They are not dropping X at any time in the near future, so um, it's not like we're going to run into a case where X is going to stop working. Uh, and I'm not a fan of jumping to Wayland and dropping X. I know some distributions are putting that on the roadmap. I think that's a really bad idea because Wayland is not fully ready yet. But to have a distribution that starts with Wayland as the default and we can roll back to X if we need it, I really support this, even though technically this is maybe why distros like Ubuntu are getting so large. You have to have so many different connections going on for Wayland and X. Uh, but that being said, uh, with this, you it is Wayland by default. You can go back to X. They're not planning on taking X out any time. Uh, Wayland now supports HDR, so a little bit richer colors for gaming and things like that. And individual users can set their color profiles specifically. We have some uh, panel floating by default. I really hope I can make it look like it doesn't float because this all looks abysmal to me. Oh. I might hate Plasma 6. I don't know. I'm going <laughs> to reserve my opinion until I download it. But I do like some of the direction they're going. Uh, I, I really think this is a, a good thing. They have uh, some new sound themes. Um, they have one ocean, which replaced oxygen. And uh, there's a few things. You can t test this out with uh, KDE Neon. And that's probably what I will do when I get the chance to, uh, to download it. And on to our final story for the... Uh, Linux news is uh, for those of us who are survivors of that horrible time called Y2K. If you guys leave a comment, if you survived the apocalypse that was Y2K, now we will all get PTSD as we look ahead to the next problem of Y2K38. Yes, there is an issue with January 2038, specifically January 19, 2038. I'm looking at this. I'm reading the book of Revelation. People are saying 2030, it's approximately seven years out. I'm telling you guys, January 19, 2038 is going to be the end of the world. This is going to be the, the final return. The ascension of Jesus is going to be here. Uh, maybe it was just uh, a poor signing of um, integers. Yeah, that's really what it is. So in Linux systems, um, some of them are still using 32-bit in, uh, integer signing, which has a cap. And what this means is that once it rolls over to January 19th, 2038, uh, the computer is going to interpret this as December 13th, 1901. And so this is going to cause some, some issues. Now, Debian is already looking to patch this in the next release of Debian because Debian tends to be running on systems and then left alone for decades at a time. Well, do the math. 2038 isn't too far in the future. And if we're talking about a system that somebody might install now and leave in the server closet for the next 10 to 15 years, if this is not fixed, it's going to cause a problem with that server. And so that's what they're working on. This has to do with uh, how um, the T, uh, T underscore time variable works. Uh, excuse me, time underscore T variable works. I'm not a programmer. You'll for, for, forgive me for that. But what they're doing is they're transitioning all these to a 64-bit, and then they're doing a plug-in to convert the 32 into the 64-bit uh, for things that are still programmed utilizing the 64, uh, the 32-bit 30, system. And so this is going to fix and mitigate the upcoming apocalypse that is going to be Y2K38. In other words, the time of the final ascension of Jesus, because clearly when Debian stops working, the end of the world is near. 
<laughs> okay, we're being parabolic. That's okay. Uh, but anyway, they're already working on this, and other Linux distributions are probably already taking some steps to this as well. But Debian is a particular of importance to fix this because a lot of other distributions, they either have faster upgrade paths like Fedora, you know, uh, of course, Arch rolls entirely. This is going to roll its way into the future. But Debian people set it up and you forget it. I mean, I'm still running uh, Debian 11 on my Open Media Vault, and I don't have plans to change it until I actually have to reinstall the software. So that's kind of my thoughts on that. And uh, with that, <laughs> with that, guys, um, uh, that is our Linux news. Of course, if you want to help support the channel, we do have a Patreon page, patreon.com slash T-O-M-M. You can help support the channel on over there. And that'll hang out uh, or that'll uh, that'll cover our um, just the various channels that we have and all the different things that, that we can do. So with that, folks, uh, thank you for watching and we will see you all next time.